Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and this is a podcast all about spinning yarn and using our hand spun yarns and just knitting, spinning, weaving, all the all the things. So welcome. Um, if you're a new viewer of the show, thank you so much for checking us out. Thank you for being here in this place with us. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for continuing to watch the show week in and week out. If you're a patron of our community and you are um, here for, for, for that, and if you're in the live chat today, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for helping me to keep the lights on here at Casa de well and spinning uh, week in week out month after month and it just gives me a lot of joy to be able to do what I love to do and to be able to provide content and all of the monthly teaching content the wool and spinning radio which is the audio podcast that's kind of turned into a, a video podcast um, that accompanies your wool and spinning subscription and just all the things that we're able to provide here if you're curious about what's going on on the back side and you're curious about what happens in the community please check out the index it is linked in the show notes um, at patreon.com slash pearls and the link will be down below later once I edit um, the sh sort of the the box below the YouTube video and if you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to reach out and ask me. Welford Pearls, uh, no, you can email me at rachel at welfordpearls, P-U-R-L-S dot com. So welcome everybody in the chat. I'm watching the chat just tick by really super quickly. We have sort of a big celebration today because we are starting Tour de Fleece. It is our first day, so I would love to hear what people are spinning for Tour de Fleece. If you guys could start sharing that, that would be amazing. Tour de Fleece is a non-competitive... Um, spinning adventure it, it mirrors the um, Tour de France and uh, we spin together until July there's challenge days there's rest days basically we do what the bikers are doing the cyclists are doing while they do the Tour de France so um, welcome uh, to everybody who is doing Tour de Fleece I have um, put links in the show notes for our tour and for our links um, this is for the Ravelry group. That's true, Diane, it is self-competitive. And uh, we start today and it will end on Sunday, June 18th. Some people try to get a huge, massive sweater spin done. Some people try to spin their first sock yarn. Some people try to spin only on spindles. There's so many different things that people do. Um, so please have a look at that if you're on Ravelry. And if not, we do have in the Slack channel, um, it is hashtag the channel in Slack for those who are part of that community, which you can find out more about that um, on Patreon. Uh, it's TDF 2021, and we just used our old thread. We just updated uh, the, 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 the channel name to be 2021, and next year we'll update it to 2022, and so on and so forth. So um, Eve is spinning her Beaumont alpaca, which I know because her and I've talked about it a ton. She says uh, three guests is what I'm spinning. Uh, she's got three more bobbins to go. Debbie is trying to find her muse to spin her Corydale fleece. Elizabeth is spinning up some Grey Gotland. Love the shine. Yes, isn't it amazing? Uh, Lindsay picked up a set of from Ingle Nook Fibers for Tour de Fleece, her first ever fade spin, which is ex really exciting. Ingle Nook does just beautiful fiber. Um, Kelly is doing North Country Cheviot for a sweater. I'm going to do a whole long draw spin, which will be my first spin all long draw. That's, that's, it's that big. That's amazing. Uh, San is spinning Baby Llama on a supported spindle. Amazing. Um, Victoria isn't spinning for Twitter Fleece, but she is picking up her new wheel tomorrow. Wonderful. Um, so she'll be knitting a hand spun shawl to stay spinning adjacent. That's awesome, Victoria. Uh, Kathy is going to jump into her scoured and combed BFL fleece. Nicole, she's pretty, actually pretty pumped about her CVM spin and she does feel a little bit self-competitive about that. That's amazing. Eva's spinning pole dorset. Uh, she prepped herself for the yell cardigan. It's all white and she's going to dye it after spinning. Oh my goodness, you guys have so much. Um, Sarah will be spinning some Romney Corydale later this afternoon. Her goal is a sweaters lot. Um, hubby and I are celebrating our 23rd anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, Rebecca is picking three um, skins worth of Kiviet for Tour de Fleece. That's amazing, Rebecca. Is that something that um, 
you and Elite have been working on, I was wondering, or like from, from somebody else local to you. So Rebecca lives in um, Rankin Inlet in Nunavut, so she's uh, able to get Kiviet. It's like literally in her backyard. Um, Eva says, uh, a gr dark gray Romney freshly prepped. Dana's combed up some Romney, a Romney cross yesterday to get ready to spin. I don't think I can keep reading all these. There's so much. Um, Oh, Diane is working on her Manx alpaca silk still. I know that's been a big spin, hasn't it, Diane? Mer Mary is for spinning old, uh, spinning old fiber, old Romney locks that she flecked new um, blends for socks made from old roll, made into roll legs. Um, Charlotte is spinning a rude Shetland fleece from Texas. Texas of all places, totally prepped into bats and ready to go. It will be my cardigan in my best laid plans. It will become a cardigan in best laid plans. Pernil is spinning some kind of garment. She has no real goal just to spin every day. Holly, oh, uh, awesome. Oh yeah, and Diana is doing this really cool thing where she's doing, uh, she's doing an assessment and, e and an evaluation of all of her spindles. So she's trying to spin on all of her spindles. Um, so that she can um, sort of evaluate which ones have a place in her fleet and which ones need to go, which I thought was really cool. And there's an article in um, um, Spin, was it Spin Off, Diana, um, that kind of got you going that was by Debbie Held, which is really neat. Um, Rebecca is ready to pack, ply the yak singles that will be spin, that will be spindle plied and then she's going, gets to choose a new project. Um, okay, so Ali does have some too. The three skins are just for me. That's amazing, Rebecca, to be able to work through that. Uh, Josie is working on her on getting her new CPW wheel, so Canadian production wheel, uh, working. Katrina and Eric helped her a few weeks ago. That's amazing. Actually, Katrina had mentioned that to Josie. That's amazing. Okay, so lots of people doing lots of things for Tour de Fleece, and we are going to be looking at the... Breed and colors, or sorry, the uh, breed study for for my new workshop from Sweet Georgia. This today we're going to be spinning up Finn, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I wanted to share my reflections about the Florence tank, and um, I I was hoping if we have enough time, I'll share you with you progress on my uh, cruiser because I'm actually I ran out of yarn. Um, thankfully, I did not run out of the orange, but I did run out of the uh, CVM, the hand-spun two-ply CVM mohair. So I've been in touch with Glenda, who's actually in the live chat today, um, and I'm gonna. She has some more in her stash, and she's very kindly offered to let me have some uh, to use for my project, and then um, I can uh, spin up a little bit more and keep spinning. I am shocked at how short I am. I triple calculated. Um, all of the yardage that I had of the CVM mohair and I am like not even close to having enough yarn. So I'll show that to you guys today and then I'll just really quickly show you because there's really nothing to show. Um, this is my Beaumont spin that I've been working on, my Beaumont alpaca. It's the same spin that uh, uh, Eve is working on actually and I did a two ply and I spun through um, one of the bumps, which is about 220 grams-ish. I got a thousand yards of yarn and I have actually cast on the Enchanté. Um, so this is the, my gauge is a little bit off. And so with my fingers crossed and um, my, uh, saying some prayers and sort of going on a bit of a wing and a prayer, um, I cast on the smallest size in hopes that I'll end up with the, um, with the next size up, um, based on my calculations and my gauge, I should end up with about two to four inches, about four inches of positive ease by doing that. So I'll be knitting the smallest size with the intention of having one of the medium sizes. So um, that'll work really super well because I don't want it to be a really tight sweater. And uh, I needed something new to cast on because the cruiser is getting so heavy and so hot. Um, we're already at 26 degrees right now. We, we have a heat wave warning for the weekend. Nora's soccer was actually canceled because of the heat. So unfortunately, we're sort of, um, uh, I'm looking for some stuff that's a little bit more, a little bit lighter, a little bit um, easier to work on that's not so heavy because the cruiser is really heavy. Um, yeah, Kelly says she's planning a trip to the fiber store today. So we're going to hopefully meet up for um, a, a little bit of time. 
meet up at the store. She's going to pick up some weaving stuff, I think, is her plan. Um, really exciting. So looking forward to that. So let's run the credits and get into the show. had a good question she said Rachel how do you get a garment out of 230 grams and I need 600 of the same stuff for mine um, I did a two ply remember so you're doing a three ply Eve and I did a two ply um, and uh, my yarn is very fine so the yarn came out uh, about 18 wraps per inch so I got a um, thousand yards of yarn and this sweater calls for the Enchanté calls for uh, for the smallest size, it calls for 800 yards of yarn, so I should be okay. I am sort of, like I said, going on a bit of a wing and a prayer. So let's talk about the fin. So uh, the fin was the third fiber, the third wool that was included in the sheep breeds um, uh, sort of pack for the sheep breeds workshop on Sweet, School of Sweet Georgia. So we have already done the Merino and we have already done the Rambouillet. And the Rambo um, actually plied up really, really nicely. It's a little bit damp. I left it outside overnight to dry, but it actually is still damp. It's not, it didn't dry, which is surprising because the low was like 17. So this is the Rambo. Um, I, I, I quite tightly plied it and it, it's come up to about a light DK heavy sport. And it's uh, got this lovely sort of gentle ivory color. It'll be really neat to see how it takes the dye compared to the more white Merino. Um, they both came out, the Merino is a little bit heavier. It's a little bit more of like, this is a solid DK and this is more of a light DK heavy sport. Um, both are very light, very, both are very squishy. Like I said, the Rambo is still a bit damp, but it's neat to see these two different breeds side by side because the yarns are slightly different. Um, the Merino is a little bit more gently um, spun. There's places where I could have tightened it up a little bit. And um, it's it's very, very um, poofy. It's got good bulk. Um, it just pops right back up. And uh, both of them have sort of the same uh, ply twist angle, but the Rambo is a little bit finer. And uh, I think I spun it more intentionally a little bit finer. Um, my, I actually like how the Rambo came out compared to the Merino. I, I was a little bit disappointed by the Merino when it was done. So once the Rambo is completely dry and once I finish off the fin, um, I will have sort of a, a three skeins to look at for the fine wools. Now, one of the reasons why we included the fin in the fine is um, even though it's an, it's an ancient Scandinavian breed, um, it could go under primitive if you wanted. It's, it's almost always a single coated fleece. A lot of the fin that hand spinners have access to, while we talk, I'm going to undo this. Um, a lot of the fin that hand spinners have access to is, is quite fine. Um, I just spun all of that gray merino silk, or sorry, fin silk from um, um, Kingdom Fleece and Fiber Works, and uh, it, it was a lamb's fleece, and I mean, it was so fine. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're sort of, for the garment industry, the wool, the micron count is generally a cutoff of about 24. Um, so fin can be anywhere from sort of 24 to 31. So it's sort of starting to get into the medium wools. But the thing is for hand spinners, we have access to, to some fin that really is for hand spinners that's very, very fine. And if it's gently spun, um, you you really have a lot of options and you really have a lot of play in terms of what is possible. So if I take this uh, two ounces of fiber and I sort of start to strip it down, I'll do it here under the camera. Um, if I pull on it too much and too, too um, aggressively, um, you will see that it'll start to really fall apart um, and it'll start to sort of 
um, drift apart. And it, I think it's just this is this is a it's it's dry. It's it's um, commercially prepared. Um, it's not uh, it's not been dyed, so it's not compacted at all. Um, it's very uh, it's very light. This is really nice stuff, actually. So fin comes in a variety of colors. You can get white fin. Um, you can get gray. You can get multicolored. Um, I think you see more of the color. I think the fleece and fiber source, fleece and fiber source book. I think that they say that generally you see more of the colors um, in North America. So let me just finish stripping this here. And what we'll do. So I don't want to rip it apart. And I think what we'll do is we'll try to sort of honor the underlying characteristics of the fin. So we're sort of getting into the, the, the medium. Um, we're sort of at the top end of the fine wools now. Um, you know, we've got these really beautiful um, locks that aren't quite so tight and crimp. They're not so um, blocky. They're starting to get a, a little bit more, um, you know, sometimes they have um, uh, sort of more of that triangular shape a little bit. Um, but you've, got, you've still got that lovely crimp in them and you've still got um, the characteristics that we would expect in the, in the fine to medium wools. But we're just getting a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit um, a little bit higher in micron count. So let's wind this up. Now I'm going to put my spinning apron on because I find that you guys really seem to find that easier to see. And uh, we'll just pull my wheel up. So I'm going to turn a little bit. Diane says she adores Finn. I've never worked with, and Nicole, I've never worked with Finn before, but I am intrigued. Oh, I love Finn. We did Finn in one of our uh, breeding color studies. Um, it was one of the uh, most successful studies actually that we've done. It was really, really good. Um, we all really enjoyed it. Um, Debbie says, I have a badger faced fin that I just washed. Oh, amazing. It is fabulous. All right, so I'm going to set, I set up my lender on teaching mode. Um, I'm currently on a, on a ratio of 12 to 1. Um, I've got my string here that goes out to 20 inches where I can distribute a certain amount of twist over 20 inches. But I think to start, um, we're just going to start spinning and just kind of see what we end up with and just let me kind of get going here. Um, so that I sort of have an idea of, of what, what this is going to sort of look like. And I will zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> so that you guys can really see what I'm doing here. Let me know if the camera um, angles work and I'll make myself a little bit smaller so that you guys can see what my hands are doing. You don't need to hear, you don't need to see me talking. You just need to hear me. <clears throat> so that's about three treadles and on two, three and on. And on two three and on I can feel that this is a little bit too high twist but we'll have a look at it regardless oh this is actually quite nice okay never mind I take that back so 12 to 1 three treadles back um, sort of working in front of me I'm not exactly sure what my distance of draft is but look at that that is really nice. That that would come out, that would finish up as probably like a DK weight. Let me just get my handy dandy wraps per inch tool. Stapling, oh yeah, we'll have a look at that, Diane, for sure. So here's my um, wraps per inch tool. And this is kind of gonna come out at about 10 wraps per inch. So it'll wash up and it'll probably poof up to about a nine, probably. So a little bit thicker than I normally spin, but just absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, that is really, really nice yarn. Nice twist angle. So I, the, the, in terms of staple length, this is not very long. And you guys probably noticed my hands weren't moving very far apart. Um, it's sort of about, 
This particular one, it looks like it's about two and a half inches, I would say. So, so if, it, if the average is sort of about two and a half inches, that means we've got everything in between. We've got some stuff that's going to be shorter and some stuff that's going to be longer. So if I go a little bit finer and spin a little bit finer and I just dropped, oh, my join was terrible. Um, I'm not surprised it broke. Often when we talk about just spinning by feel, um, part of what we're talking about is um, sort of getting on the wheel and just sort of feeling what the fibers are gonna do. And a lot of that is actually um, dictated by, by how far apart our hands can be as we're spinning um, and sort of what, what we need to do to sort of hold on to the fibers. And if we, um, and then we sort of, you know, develop these, these habits, if you will, of sort of how, how we need to hold our hands to, to get the fibers to spin and to sort of create yarn. Um, so it's a really great idea to sort of try to slow yourself down and really see intentionally like what, what it is that you're doing. So to spin this a little bit finer, I've just got my feet are going a little bit faster. I'm just taking a, a little bit fewer, fewer fibers. So as I'm drafting back, I'm not going back quite as far. And um, I'm just kind of feeling for the tips of the fibers. And my back hand is holding very, very lightly, and I'm just I'm just drafting a few fibers forward rather than trying to grab a whole bunch or worrying about the integrity of the yarn. I know that I have enough twist. My feet are going a little bit faster. This is a very easy fiber to spin, it's just that it's a little bit short. So your, your hands have to remain quite close together and you just need to make sure that you're still moving your fiber supply hand back enough to be able to draft forward enough fibers because otherwise your yarns can get thinner and thinner and thinner and you're gonna have nothing to, to draft from. So let's have a look at that. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, you guys, this. This yarn is the money. Look at that. That is just beautiful. And we'll do a three ply ply back in just a minute, but that is just a gorgeous yarn. And this is gonna come out at about 14 wraps per inch. So I would expect it to poof up a little bit to like 13 or 12, you know, maybe go up to like a thir um, 13 or 12 wraps per inch. That is just beautiful. And look at that gray. I could do a sweater in that. That would be just incredible. And I'll show you the two of them. So look at just adding that little bit of twist and drafting a little bit finer. That gives us a slightly finer yarn and a little bit more twist, but still that sort of woolen nature of just that little bit of halo that we get when we start to move into the medium wools and certainly into the long wools. And then, um, you know, a little bit less twist and uh, a little bit more thickly spun and we've got that absolutely beautiful, fluffy, bouncy two ply that would still be a durable yarn. They're both very structurally sound. They've got good elasticity. So let's look at the three ply for this uh, second sample. So with three ply plyback tests, you want to fold and fold. You're going to be near the orifice and you're going to wrap from the orifice. We go over this in the wool circle all the time when we do our live stream and we do this type of sampling at the wheel. Um, two Fridays every month, um, the wool circle is a gathering of, um, of us. It, um, if you're interested in doing more of this and what we've been doing on the podcast for the last few weeks, um, the wool circle might be something for you to look at and to think about. Uh, because this is what we do, and we come together twice a month to, to do this. This is all we do. So this above here, up here is the three ply. That's just an incredible yarn. And then that's the two ply. So the three ply comes out at 
about 12 wraps per inch versus the two ply, which is the 14 wraps per inch. And that yarn for a sweater, that would just be the bee's knees. That would just be incredible, amazing. So I think that's what we'll do with this sample is we'll spin through and we'll create that beautiful two ply. And, uh, and then next, next, next week, we'll have a look at the three uh, fine, fine wools next to each other and see how they compare. So if anybody has any questions before I come off of the wheel, um, um, just having a look at the chat quickly. Really lovely thin samples. Yeah, that those uh, those last two especially. I mean, all three of them are beautiful, but that last one, holy smokes. That is just absolutely beautiful. So let's flip back. So if you guys have any more questions, we can definitely address them, but I'm just gonna move, move along with the show just in the interest of time because unfortunately we can't be here all day, even though we would all love to be because, you know, wool and spinning Saturdays. So this is my uh, Florence tank. Um, it is a pattern by Sari Nordland. I absolutely love Sari's patterns. I have about probably four or five of them in my queue right now. Um, I just love her patterns. I love how she writes them. I love how she, um, how she, everything, all the things. Um, but this, this particular sweater and this particular pattern, there were two things that were going on. First of all, the yarn that I chose, um, and you hold the yarn double for this. So you take two fingering weight yarns and you hold them together and then you knit your sweater. I, the yarn that I chose was too fine and it was sort of more of a lace weight yarn and for the pattern and for it to work out and for it to sort of do what I wanted it to do. It really needed to be a fingering weight rather than a um, lace weight yarn. So holding two lace yarns together, it just sort of wasn't quite right. And then the second thing is that because of that, my gauge was, was wrong. And so I had made changes based on my gauge. And because of that, it just kind of ended up being a bit of um, a comedy of errors after that, if you will, um, because it, it just, everything that I did and everything that I changed, um, didn't really quite work. The other thing that I will say about this pattern is if you were to uh, grade it in terms of like beginner, intermediate, and expert, this, this pattern would very firmly be in advanced knitter category. Um, there is so much going on all at once uh, and the detailed instructions and the way that the pattern is written is just spot on. It is just brilliant. It is a typical sari pattern if you knit any of her patterns. Uh, but for somebody who is, um, if you're, if you're a beginning knitter and you see this pattern and you think, oh, I want to knit that, um, you might want to hold off until you've got a little bit more experience. The reason being is that you're doing, um, uh, you're decreasing while you're actively doing lace on both sides of the uh, yoke. So you're doing your V-neck decreases, but then you're also doing your underarm decreases. So all of this is happening at the same time that this is happening. And you need to, I, I firmly believe that one of the things that differentiates a beginning knitter from a more advanced knitter, you could maybe even be an intermediate knitter. Um, one of the things that differentiates the two is that you can read your knitting. And Brenda Dane talked about this a lot on Cast On when she um, had her audio podcast. She would talk about learning to read your stitches and learning what it is that you're seeing between the chart and your actual knitting. And I think that one of the big jumps that beginning knitters make is from being a beginner to being an intermediate knitter is being able to read a chart. And not only being able to read a chart one way from, from right to left, but being able to read it on the wrong side from left to right. 
This is a really good example of a pattern where you're working lace on the both the right side and the wrong side. So the pattern continues regardless of what size you're on. There's no rest rows. So a rest row is where you do all of your pattern work on the right side and then you purl back. There's none of that in this, like not even once. So um, it's a fatiguing pattern in that sense because you never get a break. Um, and then at the same time, you're working your button band. And if I were to do this again, I would actually do a seamed button band afterwards to just cinch it up a bit. Um, and I think that's just because I'm a little bit of a loose knitter. And again, my, my, the yarn wasn't quite right. So the way that the yoke decreases are worked, this should actually be open down here. The, the yoke, the yoke decreases actually start way down here. Again, a gauge problem. Um, but I, um, oh, I forgot to trim one of my ends. Um, but I actually added an extra buttonhole because I realized right away that that was going to be too deep and that, that I wouldn't wear it. I'm not sure that I'm going to wear this. Um, I'll be, I'm going to be honest. This is kind of one of those things that might eventually end up in the donation pile. I am really glad for the experience of knitting it. And I would actually, you guys might be surprised. I might, I would actually like to knit it again, but in appropriate yarn. Um, that's a little bit thicker that gives me gauge. Um, the other thing that was the issue was the back is very cut in. Um, you can, Kelly had suggested wearing a sports bra so that it can hide, um, so you don't have your bra lines here. And that actually works quite well. But as you can see, it's quite see-through. Um, and I've got the dark blue tank underneath, but if, like you can see when I put my hand behind here, you can see my hands. Um, and like, I, I just don't wear stuff like that. Um, I just don't wear things that you can see through. And the, the sample that she had done, um, and that a lot of the successful test knitters had done because they're working in fingering weight yarn and you've just got more physical yarn. Um, and it's not so fine. The lace yarn is too thin. So then you can see through it, right? It creates more of a sheer fabric. Um, so you, I, I'm sure there are tank tops out there that I could find that would work with this, that I could wear underneath that were either, um, a champagne color or maybe a cream color, um, or even gray. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Um, to be honest with you, I just, I just haven't gotten to the store. The other thing is you Kitchener stitch off the back to, to connect the button band. And for whatever reason, mine just does not lay nicely. I don't know why I tried it about 10 10 million times, like literally. And I just eventually gave up. Um, I just, I just got to the point where I was like, it has to be done. Um, so that's kind of too bad, but from the front, it's okay. The button band is a little bit sloppy. Um, but it, it just, overall, I was so excited about this knit. So it's just disappointing. Um, it does fit. It fits really nicely. Um, I could actually show you Just give me a sec and I'll pop it on. So this is it from the front. So if I just fix this, I tried tacking this all closed, but um, unfortunately it, it didn't really work. Um, but it, um, I could use the sewing machine actually. The sewing machine might be the answer in this case where you to actually like cinch it up and bring it bring it together. Um, so I might I might need to play with that a little bit. It doesn't look bad. Um, it's not terrible at the back and your hair covers so much of it anyways. Um, and actually, funnily enough, this tank top underneath is not terrible. That's not bad at all. So that might be an option for wearing for, for later. Um, so uh, definitely a little bit disappointed with sort of the overall, the overall feel of it and just the way that it kind of all came together. But, um, you know, they're, they live and learn. So I could raffle it. I, you know, that's interesting, Diane. Um, the thing is, is that there are a lot of mistakes. Um, and there are things about it that I think that it actually would probably fall apart, um, in places like I've already had to fix a couple of things. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just sort of, you know, processing. Um, wouldn't it help to knit a border around the armholes matching the button band? Um, that's not a bad idea, Eva. Not a bad idea. I'll think about that. Yeah, bathing suit cover, not a bad idea. Rebecca, that's actually quite a good idea. 
Um, so I tried a racer back tank top underneath, um, which is what I'm thinking um, about. The problem is that they're all quite, the ones that I have, they're all really high, but it worked at the back. So I just need to find one that's the right color um, and that has a, a lower neckline. So yeah, thank you, Dana. That's very kind. Can you show the wear open to see how it looks? Yeah, I can show you it open. Let me just undo the buttons. So nobody, so the shirt is, this shirt is meant to be worn closed. Um, it's not a, it's not meant to be a vest. Um, it's meant to be an actual shirt that you would actually wear. Um, but if you wear it open, that's actually quite cute. <laughs> you guys are so funny. That's actually quite lovely. And then it, it, and then it really is like a vest. That's actually quite good. Who knew? Get this out of your way. So that's quite funny, you guys. That's actually quite lovely. Um, yeah. So you guys are great. That's amazing. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, I, I will do a photo shoot at some point with it. I just haven't had a chance. And uh, I have my Magnolia Bloom done as well. And we'll talk about that next week. Um, just because of in the effort of time. Otherwise, we're here until like 11 a.m. So this is my cruiser. And like I said, I ran out of yarn, which I still am just absolutely shocked by. Um, and unfortunately, the needles are quite short. Um, so they it's hard to be able to show you kind of how it all sits. Um, it's a lot of fabric like I was worried about. And it's quite um, oversized. However... Um, it's really um, kind of ending up being quite cute. Um, but like I said, it is quite big. Um, there's a lot of fabric in it. And um, I this has been so much knitting and such a big sweater um, that like, and I had to rip back. I had done some of the decreases and I had to rip back because this was all wrong up here. So I've had to rip and re-knit this sweater so many times. And part of me would actually kind of like to rip it all out and make, make it smaller um, just because it is so much fabric. But I've, I don't want to have a bunch of the orange left over. And if it's really super oversized and really super big, um, like who cares? Um, because it's just, it's meant to be a really super oversized big sweater. Um, this is the back. And you can see like there's just tons and tons and tons of fabric. Um, so hopefully some of this will, um, I, I think what, to be honest with you, I think what's going to end up happening is it's going to be like a big blanket shrug. And it'll be one of those sweaters that I pull on when it's really cold outside, but it's not snowing or raining not that we get any snow but when it's not raining and you just want something to really encase yourself and you've got a like a gray t-shirt underneath um even like this would work because uh it's just like encasing yourself in a big blanket and it'll use up all of my orange yarn there won't be any leftover and uh it'll be really fun so i have to finish this off and remember this is actually because the um not having any length on the needles this is actually more like down to here so the length of the sweater is actually more like down to 15 and a half inches i think is when you cast off so yeah really really fun so that is that all right let's see what you guys are saying um, the vest. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Dana. Your hair goes really well with gray. It's funny because growing up, my mom, uh, my mom and my aunt, they both were really against wearing gray on redheads because it has the potential with people who are really fine, um, or fair, sorry, not fine, fair to make you look really gray. Um, and it just kind of makes you look a bit dull, but I love gray and I really love the grays that have a little bit of a brown tone under them. Like they have a little bit of a red to them so that they're really warm. And it's kind of become one of my favorite colors. And I think that's why the Gentle Morning was one of my favorite sweaters was because we dyed it with that uh, in that silver mist. And it just gives it that gorgeous, very gentle, like this color, um, oatmeal-y gray color. And I just love it. And I love it on pretty much everyone, like without exception. Um, so yeah. Yeah, super funky looking. The the uh, cruiser is really funky, which is why I wanted to make it. I just wanted the experience of making it. And the Veronica, which was a pattern by Shannon Cook, I loved that sweater, but it just didn't fit me quite right because my torso is so long. 
And so I thought that this would be sort of an like an option um, to make sort of a similar shape, but a little bit more of like a cardigan. So yeah, we will see uh, what it looks like. Um, I, I'm gonna put it on longer needles later today and then I'm gonna have a look at sort of what I wanna do in terms of the sizing and the shape. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Rebecca, we're going to be uh, in the same boat. She's working on an oversized hand spun orange and brown sweater and she's running out of yarn. Um, why would you hold two lighter weight yarns together rather than one thinker strand? It was just the way that this sweater was done. Um, so if you have a look at the actual sweater, um, you hold together a darker yarn to tone down the brighter, the brighter yarn. Um, that's, that's, that's why. Um, you never look dull. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Josie. Um, yeah, oatmeal gray is one of my favorites. All right. Thanks, you guys. So let's move on to community participation. So community participation, we have quite a big one today. Um, we've got a lot going on. So let's start off with our June giveaway. So tell us about your plans for the summer as we approach more opening and more gathering. The Ravelry episode thread for June is here for you to comment and you can also leave a comment on Ravelry or sorry on YouTube if you are not a Ravelry user. Um, we actually, they just released the information. I think it was last night or this morning. I can't remember where I read it. We won't be having to wear masks um, in public places indoors soon here in British Columbia. So that'll be a big step forward and I think it'll feel really weird. Um, I think it'll feel really strange. Welcome, Samantha. Good to see you. Um, oh, uh, I think what Eve meant in the vest was where you held the two lace weight yarns together. Oh, okay, Sarah, thank you um, for the clarification. So. Um, for the vest, the pattern is to hold two fingering weight yarns together or to use a sport weight yarn. So the whole purpose it was is sort of like the idea is to um, that was that was what the pattern called for. So I had these um, lace weight yarns in my stash and I and I used those. If I were to do this again with the amount of yarn that I have left over, it is truly ridiculous. I would actually hold three strands of the lace together and that would have given me a better bulk a, a bulkier yarn and a better yarn uh for this garment so if i were to do this again i would i would hold three strands of the lace together and that probably actually would have been perfect so all right oh hi julia good to see you as well so samantha and julia were able to make it um thank you holly for your kind words about the vest so let's talk about alicia's breed and color study I, she just did an absolutely beautiful job and I love her photos because they're simple and they're just really easy to see the yarn. Um, Alicia loved this breed and color study. The braids from Katrina were so much fun to spin. I ended up spinning a three ply fractal and absolutely love how it turned out. It is just beautiful, Alicia. I also figured now was the time to pull up my Shetland roving that I had made from a fleece. I was surprised with the differences between the two Shetland wools and the preps. The roving was made of just the undercoat of the sheep and is so soft. It looks soft, actually. It was a little slippery to spin and has a slight halo due to its wool in nature. I loved both spins and now want to play with more Shetland. Uh, yeah, me too. I love Shetland. So thank you, um, Alicia. And your, your three-ply fractal came out just absolutely beautiful. Amazing. And Alicia has a newborn. She's got her hands full with her two little kids. I think it's two under two or two under three. And one is just a newborn. So well done, Alicia, getting your spinning done. Um, Samantha is sharing her breeding color study. She's road tripping to the beach today for her birthday. Happy birthday, because I think this was last week. So I thought I would take my breeding color. Uh, determined to get off Sleep Island, one down, one to go, and then I can get back to the body. That is a brilliant trick. Um, Kelly of Celtic Cast On, she actually shared that trick with me years and years and years ago, like maybe 2007, where she, if, when she's doing a yoked sweater, she does the sleeves 
first and then goes back and does the body. And that's actually what I did on my Magnolia Bloom in the end because I was so worried about the armholes because they were so ridiculously huge and I just couldn't get over it. So as I was knitting the body, I was like, oh, but those armholes, this isn't gonna work, it isn't gonna fit, blah, 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 blah. And so I went, I, I grabbed, I skeined up another ball of yarn and I, which I didn't finish uh, because the sleeves were, um, didn't use it all, um, but I knit both of the sleeves and then I went back and finished the body once I knew that the, the, the sleeves were gonna fit. So well done, Samantha. Oh good, Samantha says, uh, sleeves done off sleeve island, wonderful. Well done. This is from Kat. So for Tour de Fleece 2021, we already talked about this in the earlier in the show right at the get-go. So Tour de Fleece starts today. And Kat is going to be prepping for La Tour. Um, eight bats of Zwartbulls. The last bit of fleece, this fleece I had left to be matched with eight bats of Pole Dorset to be blended half and half with a bit of Black Tussa Silk Noil. Beautiful. Gorgeous. I love that that uh, uh, Dorset. You can see that, that little bit of sheen in there from the Tussa. Beautiful. If that's the Tessa in there, or it's just her photo, but it's still beautiful. Because she said a bit of black, so I wonder. So, well, um, um, good luck with everybody's tour this year. And I really look forward to over the next probably three weeks. Because the tour finishes on the 18th of July. So I suspect that sort of over the next three weeks, so July 3rd, the 10th and the 17th, um, we'll really be focusing quite heavily on Spindle Spun Summer and uh, the tour uh, for community participation. Like I'll, I'll really be kind of heavily sharing those projects because these, uh, to, the tour and the old Spinzilla or the new Spin Together, I always found that in those weeks, the number of spinning photos that get posted and the inspiration are just, is just unbelievable. So that's kind of coming up the next three weeks, that's really what we're gonna be focusing on. So just, just to give you guys a heads up. So for Spindle Spun Summer, this is running from, uh, I'll just link the uh, information from the Ravelry group for you guys. And um, um, there is a Patreon post, I think, if my memory serves. Um, we're working on this throughout the summer. We're going to finish on the day before the autumnal equinox. And we're just focusing on spinning on our spindles. And I actually have my spindle project to share with you. Um, except that I'm not sure that I can reach it. So let me share Chris and Angela's projects and then I'll see if I can grab mine. This is Chris. He is working on this absolutely beautiful Fox Thoughts uh, pullover. So his, um, the colors that he's doing, I think that, I think he said that it takes, do you guys remember? It takes like, um, he was sharing in Maker Morning. I think it's like 26 colors or something. And it was in Pom Pom. Um, and it's just this unbelievable color work yoke of all these different colors. So he's spindle spinning many of the colors for the cardigan, or sorry, for the pullover, but he um, um, isn't necessarily going to use all hand spun for all of the colors. So just beautiful. And this yellow, I mean, you guys know how I feel about yellow. This is from Angela. Managed to finish plying my warm up spindle spin, which means the spindles are free again to start spindle spun summer for real. I am stri I'm still striving for consistency with my support spindles, but I'm happy with how this yarn has turned out. The roll eggs were from spindles and stitches and have been lurking in my stash for a while. It has been so lovely to finally spin them up. Since purchasing them, I did a couple uh, away in little swap and gift packages. Um, I gave a couple away in a little gift and, and uh, swap packages, but still had plenty left to spin myself. I ended with 72 grams of yarn, approximately 260 meters, that's amazing, Angela, and about 15 wraps per inch. The spindle spun on my singles and then plied on my e-spinner. Amazing. I love those colors. Beautiful. So let me see if I can get mine. Yes, it is right here. So I am using one of my turtle made spindles and unfortunately the, um, it's not the prettiest in terms of the colors of the arms. Um, however, this this was a bat, a little, two little mini batlings that uh, Katrina gave me for my birthday um, last year, embarrassingly. And it's this gorgeous gray with um, the, the yellow um, carded in and that's, uh, um, uh, I think it's sorry, it's pulled sorry silk. Um, just absolutely beautiful. So one little bat is going to go to each turtle and I've been spinning, um, 
on my turtle every time I get a chance. So I don't have the shaft in right now because I have it stored in my bag, but I was working on this yesterday while James was getting his hair cut. And I've just been working away at it just every time I get a chance. And I'm almost done the first bat. And then I will be ready to start the second and, and hopefully I'll be plying by next week. I've just been working on it every time that we're out and about. And it's been coming, coming along really, really quite nicely actually. I have another spin as well. Did anybody else for their long way homestead, they got a uh, Rideau um, Arcot for this month's breed study. I'm really excited about that one because I, um, it's a Canadian uh, breed and I'm actually thinking I might do that on my spindles and do that next. Um, and that'll be something that I'll kind of tote around with me for the rest of the summer. Luxury fibers along. This is from Sarah. This is just absolutely beautiful, this project. So this is our luxury fibers along that is going for the whole year. Um, we are working on luxury fibers in all of our teaching content. We're looking at different things like all the different silks. We've looked at Kiviet, we've looked at cashmere. Uh, we're doing the camelids next. We're gonna look at yak, pygora, um, and then we'll kind of do a sum up at the end of the year. And we've got another spin box coming from Sanjo Silk. I was there on Wednesday to meet with Diana about that. And I'm actually really excited about this one. I think I'm gonna get one as well. And um, I'll be publishing more about that in the next week or so. And there will be a discount for uh, Woolen Spinning Community members. So this is from Sarah. She just finished weaving the most beautiful thing she has ever made out of her hand spun yarn. It's absolutely beautiful, Sarah. For this cowl, I spun up light fingering weight two ply yarn out of Cotswold. I spun up two four ounce skeins and used one skein as the warp and the other for the weft. I put a three yard warp on my rigid heddle intending for a scarf. A little over halfway through the scarf, I decided I would rather have a cowl instead. I used and overall Brooks book oh I used an overall Brooks bouquet pattern it is super lightweight and has tons of drape making it perfect to wear even in the summer here in central Florida I love to use cowls as some added head protection in the sun this project has inspired an idea for a top that I need to sample and play around with but will be starting soon it's absolutely beautiful Sarah beautiful stunning This is from Dana, this big monster skein. I love this. I've been working on a new fleece that I got from Shepherd's Hay Farm. It's a, this is Dundee, a large Corydale Rommeldale Ram, cross ram. It's been amazing to work with and I am smitten with the first skein of two ply. I combed the locks and sampled a two and three ply. Beautiful, I love that skein. The samples are neat too to see that sheen of the Cotswold. Um, or sorry of the of the of the Corydale and and how crimpy it is and yet how how much sheen the yarn has It's just beautiful Dana gorgeous So this is our natural shades along so our natural shades along is just a celebration of all fibers that are naturally colored and Lots of stuff has been shared this year um, a lot of it's been wool so far But there's also been other things um, and some of the some of the luxury fibers have been natural shades like some of the wild silks um, and some of the plant-based fibers that people have been sharing, which is really fun. This is from Kathy. I am really enjoying the combing discussion. This is a new process for me and I just got some combs to try on this, my most recent Shetland spin. Definitely results in a smoother, more enjoyable spin and this little two ply sample was spun long draw and it is super bouncy, a reflection of the super crimpy fleece. While I could try a more worsted approach, I think this would be working against what this fleece was meant to be. Beautiful, Kathy. Sarah says, Dana, your, your spinning is fantastic. Beautiful. All of you guys, your spinning is all fantastic. So this is from Linda Sue. Um, I bought fleeces before, but typically send them for processing to a mill near me. With COVID and the need to stay home to also care for my mother-in-law on top of still full-time telework. I, I like that telework, I hadn't heard that before. I thought I would process a fleece myself. Now I have three, uh, well, now I have three fleeces. The first is a Romney dark gray named Lulu. I'm testing washing locks in prep for the Merino I bought. I also tried a small batch of the fleece to see how it, that went and I plan to try combing the locks, which is also a first. That's amazing, Linda Sue. I think it's really fun once you kind of jump down that rabbit hole of all of this stuff, it, it just is like a never ending spiral. I mean, it just becomes more and more and more, uh, you just get more and more into it. 
when it becomes more exciting and your knowledge grows so quickly and you uh, have some some successes and then you just goes from there all right i'm super excited to share these zero to heroes um this zero to hero is from uh josephine so zero to hero is something that we do all year round um it, we sort of start fresh every year but it's the opportunity to go from fiber to a spun project to something finished so woven or crocheted or knitted and the idea is to kind of for us to support you all the way through so this is uh josephine she's working on a shawl spin for an and for the andrea maori cinnabar cinnabar shawl i have two <clears throat> sorry excuse me i have two wool fiend braids which i who i'd never heard of wool fiend one of merino silk the other one targi bamboo silk the colorways are not the same, but they seem close enough to me. I am finishing today my first singles, the Merino Silk, and I plan to make a two-ply fingering. Each braid will be one ply. I really hope that the fiber combination will work in the plying as the Targi is pretty different from the Merino. You might be surprised, actually, Josephine, how similar they are when they're plied up together. And when you have colors from the same dyer, they go together beautifully because they use the same dyes and they're using the same colors and the same depth of colors. So that's why they work so well together. This yarn is going to be stunning. Um, and yeah, just, you know, give it a really good tight ply twist and you're Bob's your uncle, you're, you're going to be good. Also, I just bought a new toy. This got this beautiful, um, Phileas court, Cadoret, oh my goodness, you guys, pronunciation, Cadoret CPW wheel. The wheel is 30 inches in diameter, so it will spin really fast. So excited about it, and I'm, but I'm not able to get it working yet. Um, I think um, she's since got, I, I think Josie, you've, you've since been able to get it working if my memory serves, because you, I, I think you had been able to work with Katrina, unless I'm getting you two mixed up, but I'm pretty sure. So um, this is just amazing. My bobbin doesn't turn with respect to the flyer though it is not stuck. I can make it turn easily with my hand. I also need to adjust the wheel height on the one side because it sometimes rubs on one of the posts. So that's just amazing. Amazing. Lovely spinning. All right, let's go into play. So we have started sort of this new community participation where we just talk about play um, because play is just so integral to our lives and we don't do enough of it. Um, yes, that's right, Josie. Um, I know I, I'm, it, it gets really, when people um, have like shortened names or they nickname themselves, I, I don't want to make the mistake that you guys are, are not not the same person, but I was positive that it was the same person. <laughs> So thank you for, for clarifying Josie. So Josie was able to get Katrina and Eric some help from them and, and she's got her wheel running beautifully. So that's just wonderful. Um, so for play, this is an opportunity for adults uh, to remind ourselves weekly that we need to play and that true rest and restorative rest comes in play. Um, we need enough sleep too, but um, we also need to play. So these are, these are, um, this is sort of our, our weekly um, discussion about play. So this is from Katie. Not sure if this counts towards spindle spun summer, but I 3D printed the quill attachment for the electric e-wheel six and I've been practicing long draw on it. It's beautiful. So much fun. This is from Shauna. Um, she is prepping a combo spin, 150 grams. Uh, she's going to do six bobbins and then two ply them all together. She's getting a very, uh, she's getting a very fall vibe to this and her guess is that it will be overwhelmingly purple and maroon, but it's hard to say. I love how frequently the colors change all of the fibers, but one braid of Malabrigo Noob is spinning and drafting like a dream. Beautiful. If it's an old, braid of Malbrigo Noob, it's probably a little bit compacted and a little bit felted because they had trouble when they first started doing fiber way back years ago um, with their braids getting a little bit too compacted and a little bit felted when they were dying and they've since fixed it but um, that might be why if it's an old braid. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Rebecca, I remember that game, the uh, Oregon Trail. Explains why I've been coping with a lot of Oregon Trail lately. Hashtag play. Absolutely. Um, all right. This is also from Linda Sue. Um, she's been working on some weaving. Yes, thank you, Josephine. I really appreciate that, Josie. That's wonderful. 
um, all of our usernames and whatnot. It does, it does get confusing. Uh, this is from Linda Sue. I just love these colors. I thought they were beautiful. So, uh, and Lin Linda Sue is new to our community. So welcome. Uh, she wanted to share that she just warped her 32 inch rigid heddle Kromsky. Um, the warp is her hand spun from a loop bump called serendipity. She plans to use a silvery gray commercial as her weft. Uh, and she's hoping for a stole about 20 inches by 70. Beautiful. Love those colors and beautiful hand spun. So thank you everybody for being here today and thank you for spending so much time with me and for um, participating in the live chat and just being a part of this community. I really appreciate all of you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Kelly later today when we meet up um, at the yarn shop and uh, I hope that you all have something fun and fibery planned for this weekend. And until next time, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy weaving, happy all the things. I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.